welcome. Welcome everybody. How are you doing today? It's so very nice to have you here. So being born in a human body is one of the prerequisites for freedom. I'm sure you have heard about this before, you know, birth in a human body. And it's a rare birth. Even though we have so many billions of people on the planet, you know, there are so many more billions of other species. So birth in a human body, which is rare, and the desire for freedom, which is even more rare. You know, Papaji used to say, look at this, there's so many billions of people on the planet and only look how many people are here sitting in satsang. So why is it so important, you know, this birth in a human body? Why is it so important? There's two things really about it. You know, one is being born in a human body, we have this intellect. Which, you know, on the one hand, we, can, we all know the trouble that, come, that comes with intellect when we are attached to it, when we, you know, rely on it, when we believe it. However, the other part of it is that it enables us to look within. It enables us to stand aside, so to speak, and look within and self-examine, right? And ask that question, who am I? What's going on? So humans are the only species on the planet that can, that can really do that. And of course, you know, as with every rule, there is exceptions and there were animals that have realized freedom in Ramana's presence. And I have heard or, or seen or known other, other circumstances of animals realizing freedom. However, for most of us, we have to come in this human body to be able to look within, to be able to inquire. So the other part that is so important, you know, that is that comes with being in the body is that we have the nervous system and the brain. And having the nervous system and the brain means that when past arises, when that unfinished, unexperienced, unexamined past arises, that having a nervous system and a brain, a human body, we have the opportunity to meet it right here. You see, which really, you know, the meeting of it is really in a moment the end of the past, right? When we are willing to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's just, let's just see, you know, what is this, you know? What is this? Do I really need to, you know, believe that, get engaged with that, get involved with that, you know? Or can I just be here? Can I just be present here and see what it really is, right? end of the past. That, that's what I call freedom. Right? So when the past arises, you know, and there's so much I could say about it and I'm not going to say about it right now, but when the past arises in general, there are, there are these three things that can happen or that happen usually. One is our attention gets involved or is already engaged in it, right? And so our attention moves with the arising past and there is that reenactment, action, expression of that, right? Which ultimately really always creates more of the same, right? And then that tendency that actually gets stronger by that interaction, in that interaction it becomes stronger, then that tendency subsides again and you know it looks for a moment like it's not here, right? But it has only sunk deeper into the unconscious again where it's resting, you know, and waiting for another circumstance, you know, to bring it up, right? The other thing that happens, that can happen, you know, and this, this, you know, uh, that it arises and shows up like that and, you know, circumstances bring that up, bring up that past. You know, that's why sometimes, you know, you go about your life and everything is going well and then, seemingly out of nowhere, all this past is present. And that means tendency that has been resting, that has been hidden, that has been waiting, 
right? For the right circumstance to arise. So the other thing that happens, you know, when past is present, that consciously or unconsciously we suppress that. Right? So rather than engaging in, you know, movement with it, expression, engagement, you know, er acting, reenacting, we want to make it non-existent, we want to suppress it, right? And so we make a conscious effort or unconscious effort, there's also physiological mechanisms that get involved in, you know, controlling, suppressing the past. And, and so it looks like we can control it and, and let it, you know, subside again, however that makes it stronger, right? Expressing it, recharges it, makes it stronger. Suppressing it makes it stronger again. Whatever we resist persists, right? Whatever we resist, we give it energy. Right? So there is, of course, this third, you know, uh, uh, option or opportunity, which is what I call satsang, right? Which is called, what I call being present here. And that is to let the past be here the way it is. As it arises, let's meet it. Let's meet it here. That's the function of the nervous system. That's why we need the body, you know. That's the function of the nervous system, the brain. It can experience that vibration as it is present. It can let, you know, that vibration, however it is, strong or, or, or light or shaky or, or, or intense or, or, you know, or lots of energy or whatever it is, you know, it can allow it to be here. So it can just burn through, so it can just move through, so it can be met. Here, it does not have to perpetuate. Right? And oftentimes, you know, um, sometimes it's enough to do it once. Sometimes we have to do it many, many, many times, dependent on the strength of the past. However, every time you are here in it, with it, that's the end of the past, right? That's the end of the past in the moment. That moment of just, let me just be here. That's what I call freedom. So, you know, to, to, to build the capacity of the nervous system and the brain to meet the past. It's possible to do that, you know. It's possible to learn more how the nervous system functions, how the brain and the nervous system functions. And I speak a lot about it in my programs, you know, I find it so powerful, information, right? We can learn, we can know more about it, we can understand how, you know, these are, often there is, there is the desire already, I want to be here, but how? What does that mean, really, right? What does that mean to meet it directly? What does it mean to come here into the present, right? So by understanding, by learning about it, by practice by being willing to be here we can grow the capacity of the nervous system to be here so that we can experience the past because really freedom is the purpose of this life that's why we are here that's what we really want you see that's what we really desire that's not what we always think we want right again lots and lots i could speak about that but really in the deepest, deepest way, you know, what we really want is to be here, right? What we want in a moment, just, just to be able to be here, you know, just the way we are.